Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Rupert Landerville. During the winter months, when the daylight hours are fewer and the light is not really conducive to my style of photography, I do less of it. Photo walks are generally done after dark under the sodium glare and neon lights of the streets. It's certainly time well spent for me and I really enjoy it. However, this time of year is also good for editing the year's pictures and deciding what I want to keep and print. Ever since starting out in photography in the 1980s, I have enjoyed the editing and printing part of it. Of course, in the days before digital, developing and printing was the only way you could see the fruits of your labour. And even though the convenience of digital has done away with the real need for it, printing is something I still do and enjoy. I get immeasurable pleasure from producing the printed work, framing it and hanging it. Not only that, I think you view your photography very differently in the printed form. I would suggest that it's one of the best ways to be truly critical of your work. Now, some of you may say that the printing process can be an expensive one, especially when done at a decent quality. But you don't have to own an expensive printer and use high quality paper to achieve good quality prints. Nowadays, it's possible to get it done on the high street or online quite affordably. And provided your image file meets the standards required by the printer, you should have no problems in producing good quality prints whenever you want them. Today I'm going to show you how I edit and prepare images for printing and then show you the printing process itself, followed by the matting, framing and hanging. So let's get started. I'm going to be selecting some images taken earlier this year and I'm going to edit and adjust them to get them print ready. Two of the images I'll print in black and white and a third I'll print in colour. I'll decide on any cropping that I think might improve the compositions and probably take a look at the contrast to see if the overall light balance can be improved too. I'm going to be using Adobe Photoshop to do this. Additionally, I'll be making a print of an image taken some years back that a customer has ordered a framed copy of. I have an Epson Stylus Pro 3880 printer. This model has been discontinued, but you can find it on eBay for around 500 quid. It can print up to 17 times 22 inches, which is about A2 size, and I think the image quality is superb. I really like this printer and have never had any problems with it. I will mention though that the genuine Epson ink cartridges are expensive, and a complete set of nine will take you back over £400. However, they do seem to last me quite well during moderate use. There are cheaper compatible cartridges available if you want to go down that route. Of course, the choice of paper is another important factor. There is a large range of inkjet paper available from different manufacturers and I have experimented with many of them. The choice of weight and finish will depend largely on personal taste and how you're going to display the print. For the first print, I'm going to be using Hanamula Matte Fine Art Photo Rag. This is a cotton paper with a wonderfully soft, smooth feel, but with a lightly defined felt structure, so there is some texture present. I'm using the lighter weighted 188 gram version because the print I'm making will be going behind glass. Starting with an image taken in spring this year in Cambridge, I've had a request for the image to be potentially used on a book cover and they would like to see a printed version of it. I captured this in JPEG format, so let's open that up. In the picture there are actually two figures, one of which is barely visible on the left hand side in the shadow, but they want this one hidden, leaving just the guy in the hat. It's often the case that when an image is used for something like a book cover, certain changes need to be made to it in order for it to fit the narrative. I'll use the burn tool with a wide soft brush and the exposure set to 30 to increase the shadow area, which will hide the second figure. Additionally, I'll increase the contrast by about 35 to give the image more punch in keeping with the overall look. I prefer to print from Lightroom instead of Photoshop as the process seems to be a bit simpler and I like the interface. So let's open the image and set the print up from the available options. Firstly, I'll open up the page setup box to select the A4 paper size. Now I'll select the correct paper type. For this print it will be Hanamula Photo Rag. And the media type will be matte. Now I'll check the paper handling is set to A4 and the photo paper is set to enhanced matte paper and we're ready to print. Depending on the size, the prints can take a few minutes to complete. 
That's come out quite well and they should be happy enough with the result. Next is a night image taken in London's Shad Thames next to the river. This was shot at quite a high ISO, so it's quite grainy, but I think that suits the subject matter and adds to the mood. I'll be interested to see how this prints out and whether the grain might be too much. I've increased the contrast, lightening the central area and burned the edges to create a slight vignette. I wanted the image to have a sort of Giorgio de Chirico melancholic mood to it after the Italian painter. Check out my video on inspiration to see more on how he has inspired my work. Okay, that's fine, let's take it into Lightroom. I'm going to print this one on Epson semi-gloss paper, which is a fairly standard paper and good for general use. We'll print this one to fit an A4 sheet. That looks good, the grain is fine and the shadow detail is too. Next up, I'm going to do a colour print of an image taken in London last spring. This is my take on a Saul Leiter reflection style image. I actually prefer the image in black and white, but I thought it would be good to see a colour printed version of it. It required no cropping, just a little straightening. The contrast was increased, lightening the highlights, and the saturation was increased too, which added more richness to the colours. I'll set the levels to auto to apply the correct colour balance. I'll then adjust the contrast by increasing it by about 20. That seems about right. Finally, I'll increase the colour saturation level to around here, about 35 or so. That's given the image more richness. Here's the before and after. Adjustments such as this are often all you need to do to improve the overall clarity of an image. I haven't done anything like as much colour printing as black and white on this printer, so it'll be interesting to see the results. I'll print this to fit an A3 paper size as I may wish to frame and hang it if I like the result. I'm going to print this at the finest detail and remove the high speed option, so it will take longer to print. I'm happy with that, good contrast and colour saturation as seen on screen. This one's a keeper. The final image I'm going to be printing today is one taken back in London in 2013. A customer has requested a framed copy of this about A2 in size, which is the maximum size I can print on this machine. Once printed, I'm going to mount it and frame it using this frame. I'm pleased with how that's come out, deep blacks and strong highlights. I remember seeing this scene and was keen to use it, as I knew imminent building work was going to mean its destruction. I had to wait patiently for someone to walk past and then this lady arrived. For mounting, I'm using a ready-made mount that came with the frame for this print. Sometimes I have to make the mounts out of mount board to fit the image properly. Occasionally, depending on the frame and picture, I'll frame without a mount so that the print fits the frame's dimensions completely. That done, the picture is ready for hanging. When hanging a picture, I try to choose a position where the light it will receive benefits the image. There are no two ways about it. A properly printed, framed and hung picture is the best way to show off your photography. Well, there we have my printing method, all fairly straightforward and easy enough to control. What we see on the screen is well represented in the printed version, which is obviously the main goal. I can't emphasise enough the importance of seeing your work in the properly printed form. For me, the real appreciation of a photograph cannot begin until you've been close up to the printed image. It's a beautiful thing to behold, and I highly recommend it. Whether that means printing it yourself or using a recommended service to do it for you, you will not only look at your pictures in a different way, but you'll be taking another step towards better photography. Check out my book Fine Art Street Photography, which is available from the link below. Thanks very much for watching.